morning. Hi, it's Alex Gubay here with the List Meyer Products e-commerce podcast. I'm joined today by Rick Murchie. Rick, how are you today? Good. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. So That's Rick's great. got an amazing story of uh, you know one that amazing. a lot of, about that. I think it's amazing <laughs> uh, because it's really relatable. You know, a lot of people who get started in e-commerce uh, sometimes you you start it in, uh, in a direct way. Sometimes you back into it. And Rick's going to talk about e-commerce diversification today. But I want to give a little backstory. Uh, you know, Rick studied at Brooklyn College. He learned about law, learned about psychology, um, got into social work, saw that he had an amazing ability to work with people, but he decided he wanted to do that in a slightly different way. And through several different amazing opportunities, um, you know, diverse opportunities, he found himself working in e-commerce. And today we're going to talk about e-commerce diversification. And we're going to pick up with Rick telling us a story about his first job selling um, three different channels. So, um, Rick, the story is yours. Thanks. So, um, yeah, so I had uh, just started a position working with a very successful company that was uh, selling on Amazon and eBay and Walmart. Those are like the classic marketplaces that everyone thinks about when they're selling product online. Um, when we got in there with them, you know, we always questioned if there was another strategy that we could take to do a little better in business. You know, we, we were doing very well, but there's always that question that that black cloud that hangs over your head. You know, if you're relying on one particular channel for your revenue, what happens if that channel disappears? And now everyone thinks, you know, Amazon's not going anywhere and Walmart's not going anywhere. And none of these guys are going anywhere and they're providing me so much revenue and it's great. But there are stories out there that you may not know or you may know of very large sellers who are selling tons of product, millions of dollars a year. And then all of a sudden, one day, Amazon sends them a letter and says, hey, you can't sell here anymore. Sorry. For whatever reason. Sometimes they tell you the reason, sometimes they don't. But either way, you've woken up one morning now and your entire business is lost. You could have 50 employees. You could have 20 employees. You could have 100 employees. And suddenly, without that revenue coming in, you can't pay them. So with those stories that I knew about, you know, uh, I had been hearing from sellers who were having these issues. Uh, I went to the, my company and I said, look, you know, this might not be the most sustainable business model. Sure, we're doing great. But what happens if this happens to us? And after a number of internal discussions, we decided that we were going to look for other places to sell, which is a very foreign concept when you're talking to an Amazon seller. Most people would say, why would you want to look anywhere else? That just means you have to increase your, your productivity to handle all of these other channels. And you know, Amazon is the big dog. Sell there, you get all your, get all your profit. So we, we decided to look into what could be other, other potential places to sell. And, and with our product line, we looked at places like Home Depot. We looked at Lowe's. We looked at Wayfair. We looked at Overstock. We looked at many of these retail non-marketplace sites. And I could go into detail and explain what the difference is between retail and a marketplace. And, you know, you let me know if you want me to. But, um, you know, just, just to continue the story, we worked very, very tirelessly to gain connections in those particular retailers. And we did. It took us almost a year and a half to do it. But we finally made our uh, buyer connections. And we started working with the Home Depot and Lowe's and a number of other channels. Uh, that after, after doing that for, I would say a good two years, I realized that there's so many other people out there who have the same problem. They may not even know they have the same problem. They're all reliant on one or two channels. Why aren't they, diversif why aren't they diversifying? And that became my tagline. I would tell people, anyone I met who I knew was a seller, I would tell them, have you thought about diversifying? You know, maybe not in that same, you know, sing song kind of voice, but, you know, I, I would say, have you thought about diversifying? Because really you should. And people would ask me why. And I would explain to them the whole thing. They'd say, oh, you know, that's a very good point. So it was around COVID time, as most of these stories start, it was around COVID time. And uh, I was looking for a way to be able to spend more time at home with my family because, you know, the kids were off from school, schools were all closed. Uh, my wife was home with three little kids and she was trying her best to keep up and it wasn't necessarily the easiest thing. Um, so I, I started thinking, what can I do to open my own business? And I realized that this was the way. 
this was the path I needed to take. This that I did in this company that I was working for, I could do for multiple companies. Why am I saving this idea and this talent that I have for one particular company who's employing me? Instead, why don't I sell this ability to other people and do it for multiple people at the same time? I, I, I would say within the next year, we have between 50, we've, we've, helped, we've helped hundreds of companies. We have currently between 50 and 75 active clients who we're working on diversifying uh, and you know, building out catalogs for them on various uh, retailers and marketplaces. We've built connections with at least 15 retailers and there's more on the way every day. Uh, and that's, that's the story. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. And so at a macro level, you know, without giving away the secret, you know, how <laughs> does it work? Um, if I say, Rick, I got, uh, maybe you talked about Home Depot, Overstock, Wayfair. I remember I worked with um, a furniture company in Los Angeles and they're just getting their products online. And that was just taking them from a, on a, a physical store in downtown LA to just getting their products online. That's one channel. So once mm -hmm. they've got one channel, I'm um, going to say, Rick, uh, it's time to go uh, to more, um, you know, generally, how does that work? So, you know, the, the, the way it works, uh, and, and it's going to seem simple, but the fact of the matter is, is that it takes years to get the, to get this uh, ability together, right? We have these established connections with these buyers. They know me, they trust me, they know that I've been providing them with good brands all this time. And because of that, when I bring them a brand, they're not questioning necessarily whether it's a good brand. They're just questioning whether it's the right brand for them. And that's where I come in. I know how to explain to them and how to pitch to them that this is something that they need on their site. Does that mean that I'm 100% successful at all time? No. And I will tell you that right off the bat. I will never lie and say, I get everyone in and the buyers listen to whatever I tell them. It's not true. The fact is, is that I have a 90% success rate. And the reason that I have a 90% success rate is because I'm extremely selective about who I work with. Okay. I'm not going to take an apparel company who sells shirts and bring them to the Home Depot and say, hey, you need this, this shirt on site. They don't sell apparel. They're not interested in it. I could take that apparel guy's money and say, sure, I'll do it. But that's not my business model. My business model is helping people, not taking money. I like it. Much more scalable uh, yes. produces results. <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely. Uh, so let's talk about, you know, the struggles that have been involved in this. Um, obviously, one had to be the sheer length of time to build that relationship with Wayfair, Home Depot, Amazon, um, I mean, Walmart, excuse me. Yeah. You know, what, what are some other struggles you had to overcome, I know, to get to this point? Because this is just another small business owner. I know sometimes you can look at something and say, man, it looks super easy. And then you have, and you go and do it and you're like, I did not see this. I did not see this. So, you know. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I want to say I'm extremely calculated in how I do things, right? So I don't just look at things and say, oh, this sounds like, this sounds easy. I'm going to jump in, right? I wait and I wait and I wait until the perfect moment. For me, the things that I was lacking were A, experience which I was gaining every single day working for various other companies and doing this for them. Uh, and, and B was really funding, to be honest with you. That was the biggest hurdle. Uh, I had known that I wanted to do this for a good two or three years, uh, but I never had the ability to just drop whatever I was doing and jump in with both feet. Um, it, it, took, it took planning. It takes a lot of planning to walk away from a six-figure position where you don't really have to worry about where your next paycheck is coming from. Health insurance, you know. Health insurance, any of that, yeah. yeah. So, you know, what it came down to was, uh, I was talking to, a, I'm blessed to have some very good friends, and I was talking to a friend of mine, and uh, he wanted to hear any ideas I had for business. And he listened to me talk about this potential business that I had, and he looked at me and said, you have a new career. Walk away from where you are, and I'll fund you. And thank God it worked out. And uh, uh, to be honest, um, the way the business grew as quickly as it did, I didn't really need the funding, but I'm just happy that uh, I was able to feel that confidence and be able to walk away from the high position that I had 
with my head held high. Awesome. Awesome. And I've talked to some really great business owners on this podcast and some of you know, related to Amazon, other, um, you know, e-commerce related items and, you know, scalability in e-commerce is, you know, amazing, especially when it comes to, you know, products and especially if you had new distribution channels. Well, let's talk about the scalability of this company itself. You know, where do you see the greatest opportunity for growth going forward? Well, you know, we, there's always more channels out there. Um, channels are opening up every day, especially in this current environment that we're in, right? Mm -hmm. Retailers, and this is something that I've been predicting, by the way, for about two years now. Retailers with these big names and tons and tons of stores that they maybe can't really afford anymore are looking at those stores less as we have to make this store work and more as this store might not be successful for us, but we can go online, expand what we're willing to sell without taking any inventory in and, and we can have a huge business and we can rebuild our, our, our brands. We can rebuild our names. You know, you look at a company like uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, you know, COVID happened and they started closing 300, 400 stores. Yeah, their stock. They could, yeah, then their stock plummeted. They couldn't afford it anymore. So, but what are they doing now? Now they've opened an online marketplace. It may not be very large yet, but they're doing it. They're building it. They're slowly building it because the name Bed Bath & Beyond carries so much weight that you can sell any product on that site and people will come to it and buy it. This is going to be happening over the next two, three years with, I, I, my prediction is almost every retailer, every, every brick and mortar retailer who doesn't currently have an online platform will have an online marketplace by the end of 2025. Absolutely. That's my prediction. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen that. Um, you know, really going, you know, the strength of listmartproducts.com has been taking people zero to one um, and truthfully don't have the ability right now to go from one to many. So this is a mm. great, great opportunity for people in my audience who I've worked with. Reach out to Rick. Uh, you yes. know, once you've got that stable foundation, you know, there's no reason not to grow it. 100%. 100%. We're growing every day. We're always talking to new retailers. We don't always get the, the, the yeses. Sometimes the retailers look at us and say, no, we're not interested in working with you. And that's fine. We're okay with that. But the more retailers we can get who are, who are interested in working with us and are interested in seeing our brands and the more brands that come to us to increase the portfolio of brands that we have, the better the, better the chances are that we'll be able to help more and more people to diversify to more and more places. Awesome. Awesome. So again, this is Rick Merksey. Uh, Rick, how can people get in touch with you and learn more? So you can go to my website. It's www.ecomdiversified.com. There's a contact us form there. Feel free to fill it out. Tell us what you're interested in doing. Uh, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Otherwise, you can email us at info at ecomdiversified.com. Uh, both of those ways are good ways of getting in touch with us. I do prefer the contact us form. So if you can use that method, that would be appreciated. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so even that, I, even from my own experience, I know that, uh, you know, it's everything about the sound stable, even the contact form. You know, if you want to have a channel, uh, you know, whatever channel you start out on, the first one will teach you how to have your products online and how to fulfill them. And then you grow. And the same thing for just, I know this is a microcosm example, but if someone fills out that form, it's going to flow, I'm sure, into a, uh, you know, a, a database where it's a lot easier to manage. And so this is yeah. just an example. I you know once you go zero to one, once you get that a way of, you know, getting controlling the funnel, then you can put as much as you can in there and just keep going. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, it, 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 I'm sure this is the, uh, the metaphor that you were going for, but you know, when, when you're building an e-commerce business, you know, fulfillment is the most important thing that you can do and you can learn. And once you have a, a fulfillment operation built, you can scale that fulfillment operation to as many channels as you want. Absolutely. Well, Rick, thank you so much again for coming on the show today. Absolutely. It was ha I'm happy to be here. All right. Rick Murphy from e-commerce diversified.